What the f***? You're a surgeon for Christ's sake. Professionals, a lot of times, are the absolute worst because they have this sense of superiority. They have this God complex where they don't think they can do anything wrong. We worked so damn hard to get our license. I worked really hard to get that. And I've had 26 years of experience. You think I'm going to do something really, really stupid in order to just have some short-term benefit? You lose your license, it's very, very difficult to get it back. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Guess what? I'm Bruce Rivers. You are personal board certified criminal defense lawyer, accompanied by our content genius, Michael Rivers. Today we're reacting to a plastic surgeon who gets busted for meth. Ugh. You know, this is brought to you by eSign.com. You know, eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. Did you know that? Let's say you're in the business of being a plastic surgeon and you find yourself in the backseat of a squad car. You call your wife because you need a bondsman and you need a lawyer fast. What does your wife do? Your wife calls a lawyer. And what does the lawyer do? The lawyer has already downloaded the app and he got three free signatures a month. And guess what? Now you've got a lawyer on board because eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. But I use it all the time. I absolutely use it all the time when I have a retainer agreement or a medical document or any kind of other document that I need signed quickly. You know, eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. I haven't seen this, so let's just dive right into it. Professionals, a lot of times, are the absolute worst because they have this sense of superiority, they have this God complex where they don't think they can do anything wrong. I had a client who was a world-renowned pediatric urologist. Now think about that. He deals with amazing uh, microsurgery, like tiny, tiny surgery. He's in his driveway at like uh, 2 a.m. or so, and he's, he's over 0 .20, and the cops are going to arrest him. Well, you can't arrest me. I have surgery at 6 a.m. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? That you can't do that. You you know, and I talked to some other doctors that knew him. And they said, you know what? He's sort of better that way. I mean, they know it and they put up with it. I mean, so the doctors do kind of uh, protect their own. So let's get it. Let's get into this. I have to call Would you them. like me to call like them and there. tell them? A Florida plastic surgeon arrested for possession of meth while he's on his way to work to operate on a patient. Um, they're all waiting for me right now. The arrest happened on May 24th, 2022, when officers pulled over Dr. William Wright Adams for a traffic stop in Pinellas County, Florida. So you're a doctor and you get pulled over for a traffic stop. How does your traffic stop get expanded into a search of your vehicle because now you got meth? According to the criminal complaint, the traffic stop was initiated to question Dr. Adams about a 2021 residential burglary. They're lighting them up. Well, it looks like he just pulled over on 31st Street. Let's just, let's just think about that for a second. One of the things that the cops have before they pull you over is they have to have a reasonable and articulable suspicion of a crime that you committed and that you committed that crime. That's what they need to pull you over. It's a very low standard. If they're investigating a burglary that happened like a year before, how is that anything, how does that give them cause to stop him? Perfect. We can 15 him right away. When the officer approaches the doctor's vehicle, police immediately place him in cuffs. Dr. Adams then tells the officers he's... So why would they immediately place him in cuffs? Because he's a suspect in the burglary. But this, something's not adding up for me here. He's on his way to the operating room for a patient who's about to undergo surgery. And keep in mind, keep in mind, so if they get him into custody, then they can search his vehicle. There's two types of basic searches without a warrant something in plain view you know the automobile exception to the warrant requirement is just that if you're getting arrested they can search it do an inventory search of your car so they don't need any 
any cause to say, oh, you know, there's a criminal activity going on inside the car, so we need to search it. No, they can do an inventory search. And that's, you know, that's their exception to the warrant requirement. Explain everything, okay? I'll explain everything, all right? It's supposed to be operating right now. Okay, that's fine. This is more important right now. Thank you. All right? Is this too tight to pull your hands? Can you work the second set? Operating where at? Operating where at? I'm a plastic shirt. Okay, where at? My office. Where's that at? On Ninth Avenue. Okay. Got anything in your pockets or anything? I don't Something tells me that they had a lot more information about him doing this than than just this little traffic stop. So, I'll check. I'll check. Authorities then place him in the backseat of the police squad car, then proceeds to search Dr. Adams's vehicle. His cell phone's right there, his bag's right there. And So they pull him over investigating a burglary that happened in 2021. You can tell by the squad cam it's 2022 on this video. And they immediately put him in cuffs. So unless they had a warrant for him, what's their cause to put it to arrest him? To put him in the back of their squad? I saw him picking it up while we were uh, following him too. We we expect doctors and lawyers, for that matter, and judges and people in positions of trust to be sort of above this kind of thing, right? But doctors and lawyers and judges and anybody else, you know, in a high position of authority are guess what, what they are before anything else. They're human. And they fall prey to the things that everybody else does. Maybe not with the frequency, but they do. Uh-oh. Stethoscope. Shortly after, the officer pulls a backpack from Adams's car. But when the officer goes to speak to Adams, the Florida doctor urges the officer that his patient is waiting for him. We want somebody to come and pick up your car because we're parked on 31st Street. It's right. Busy street. I mean, so. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's going on. Okay. Well, I'd love to talk to you. Um, before I can ask you anything, we've got to read you your rights, okay? But I want to figure out because we're blocking a busy street right here. You're putting okay. somebody to sleep right now for okay. me to operate on. Okay. So I have to call Would you them like me to I, call I them and there. tell them? Uh, or are they going to do... Yeah, call them and tell them I'm being arrested for meth. But is he being arrested for meth or something else? Do that when you show up. Um, they're all waiting for me right now. Okay, so I'm are saying. they doing the medicine prior to you showing up? Station probably somewhat. Usually yes, yes or no, because I'll make a call over yeah, there. Yes, please call. Okay. Police then make a call to Dr. Adams' office to let his staff know not to put the patient under anesthesia and to have someone from the office pick up his vehicle. Just tell him not to uh, sedate the next uh, person. Is there somebody that can pick up your car or are we yes, just going to yes, tow is. it? Yes, there is. And here's the downfall of this kind of stuff. It fucks with your freedom. It fucks with your finances. It fucks with your health. And it fucks with your professional life. You know, I mean, he's going to get a he get his ticket yanked for that. Okay, who is it? Um, just, if you just tell them, you know, if somebody just come pick up the car, they'll do that. There's more than enough people. Are you saying from someone from the office? Yeah, there's more than enough. He's saying there's more than enough people at the office to come and pick up the car. The officer then attempts to question Dr. Adams, but he refuses and asks for a lawyer. I know you. And what happens when that happens? You got to cease all questioning the minute he asks for a lawyer. 
probably have uh, no clue what's going on right now, but I think you have a uh, perspective of what I'm going to bring up that I appreciate um, statements for. Um, that's up to you. Um, I want to ask you a specific question, but before I do that, I have to read you your rights. Um, okay. I do that with everyone that's in custody. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or her present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you. What are the two things that require the Miranda? You guys should know this by now. Two things, in custody and interrogation. You know, people say, oh, you know, they never read me my rights. Well, if they're not asking you any questions, they don't have to. But if they want to elicit a response from you, they have to read you your rights if you're in custody. You could decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of these rights I have explained to you? Yes, sir. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? Uh, I would, my attorney, Kevin Hayes, later. Okay. You want your attorney present? Yes, sir. Okay. While police wait to hear back from Adams's lawyer, they continue searching inside the doctor's backpack, where the officer locates a glass pipe and later small bags containing crystal meth after the officers bag up their evidence. Then authorities are eventually able to get in touch with the doctor's lawyer, who tells his client to hang tight. We're going to invoke your rights against self-incrimination. This is not the time to tell your story. There will be a time. This is not that time. So I have invoked your rights uh, against speaking to them. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to speak to the right people at the right time. Just today is not the time. So I'm going to ask you not to answer any more of the questions. They're not going to ask you any more questions. Yeah, I mean, that's good that the lawyer is giving that advice. But I don't even know that they need to call the lawyer. Honestly, they just need to stop questioning, period. I would ask Bill that you don't voluntarily want to explain what happened because there'll be a time for that. Do you understand? If they Mirandize you and you invoke your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and ask for a lawyer, then what happens? If you all of a sudden say something on the way to the jail that, that they didn't ask, that can be used against you. Is that Bill? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's just, let's assume that you've been given propofol and you can't talk, okay? So just say nothing. Let's go ahead and, and just, uh, we'll, I'll connect with you. I will get you bonded out of jail this afternoon. It will take probably till 3 or 4 o'clock today. They've got to book you. They've got to take you. This process uh -huh. takes some time. So, um. Meanwhile, he's probably got a whole list of patients that are all lined up. So which he's going to have to reschedule and and he's probably going to get some kind of order prohibiting him from from practicing, I, I would bet. Okay. And then at, at the appropriate time, we will talk to the people that need to hear your story, okay? Yes, sir. Meaning the jury. To the arrest report, a co-defendant told authorities Adams hired him to rob an ex-boyfriend's home and retrieve property Adams said was gifted to him. The report goes on to state security surveillance video captured what looked to be Adams' vehicle driving by the victim's home. And two neighbors spotted a man in teal scrubs and a person in a cowboy hat. Court what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Are you? You're a surgeon, for Christ's sake. You're a plastic surgeon. You got a nice practice. What are you doing burglarizing somebody's fucking home? Over what? Over what? Who knows? I mean, it's just stupid. You know, people themselves up over stupid shit like this guy just did. I mean, I just can't even believe it. Court records show Adams was later charged with possession of methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia as well as, as if burglary wasn't enough. Now you signed up for a fucking meth charge. You know, whenever you're if you're if you got some exposure and you get pulled over and all of a sudden you got something else going on, it's just no good. I mean, it's just I cannot believe a doctor would put himself in that much of harm's way. But what did I say before? They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you and I do, and they fall prey to the same thing that just about everybody else, not everybody else, but, you know, like every, everybody that's in this does. Just because he's a doctor doesn't even mean he's immune from either addiction or bad decision-making. And this was some bad decision-making on his part. As residential burglary. He is slated to go on trial for the charges in December.
According to reports, this wasn't Dr. Adams' first run-in with the law. He was arrested in 2020 for possession of meth, but prosecutors later dropped those charges. The Florida Department of Health license verification website also shows Dr. Adams' license is clear and active with no record of complaints or discipline despite his arrest. But the doctor reportedly took to his social media that he plans to retire from his practice effective December 1st. Gee, I imagine why. <laughs> because he's going to have to lose his license. But we see this shit all the time. I see a pharmacist uh, digging into the till, basically. You know, taking drugs for themselves. I see doctors doing shit they're not supposed to do. In, involved in business deals with their client. Using their position of authority to, uh, to manipulate a, a client. I've seen lawyers use their position to steal money out of the trust account. You know, it's so tempting. For some people, not me. But it's so tempting for some people to do that. And guess what happens when you do that? You get caught. And when you get caught, these kinds of cases, there's nothing you can do about it, generally speaking. Because if you've, if you've taken money from a trust account from somebody who's vulnerable, that's so easily proven. And let me tell you something about the class of professionals that go over the line on you know, license. They cross the boundaries of good behavior, you know, in other words, lawful behavior. You lose your license, it's very difficult to get it back. Sometimes there's a there's a waiting period before you can even apply. You know, I have got a close friend that just is about to lose his license and they want to take it for at least two years and he's going to do exactly what this guy did, retire and uh, not fight it and say, fuck you, I'm going to go sell cars or whatever the hell he's going to do, just collect his social security. Now he's broke. We work so damn hard to get our license, like my, my license on the, you see the license on the wall? I worked really hard to get that and I've had 26 years of experience. You think I'm going to do something really, really stupid in order to just have some short-term benefit rather than do life the old-fashioned way and work your ass off and enjoy what you do? You know, I, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. And, you know, and, and I don't mean to badmouth people who do because if that's your choice, that's your choice. But, you know, when it affects your your livelihood, when it affects your health, when it affects your finances or your freedom, think again. And I hate to see this, honestly. You know why I hate to see it? I hate to see it because I hate to see somebody go down. I like to see people flourish. You know, I like to see people help people. I love helping people. Let me tell you what I did today. I have a client that, uh, that pled guilty on a gun case in January. And, or not January, that's when he got the case. But he pled guilty and... While the whole thing was pending, he went back to school for HVAC. He got sober, went through treatment, reconnected with his family, and started building. And I didn't tell him to do any of that. He did all of this on his own. Started making some money and just building in every area. And guess what? He had a 60-month mandatory minimum sentence. We had sentencing today. And guess what the judge did? He granted my motion for a departure downward. In other words, he got probation and didn't do all but five days in jail. And guess what? And guess what that does? That keeps his life together. You know, the life that he's been building. It's so easy to lose it, guys. It's so fucking easy to lose it. Build, 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 build. You know, you look back and you say, fuck, look what I built. I'm doing okay. You know, you make better decisions that way. Once you start tipping your toe in the in the waters of inequity, guess what happens? You know, you 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 break this line, then you break that line, you break that line. It's like somebody who steals. You know, somebody who, oh, I'll just pay it back next week. I'll pay it back. I'll pay it back. I'll pay. They never do. They never do. And and then all of a sudden they realize, oh, shit, I owe a million dollars. And then they come knocking on your door, you know, with a search warrant. All I'm going to tell you is that do things the right way. Sometimes it might seem really hard. You know, and sometimes it is hard. I've been broke as a joke sometimes, you know. But guess what? I didn't break any rules. I didn't cross any lines. I've decided to just keep keep at it, keep building. So that's just my little preachy bullshit for today. <laughs> so we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Sign up for our Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers is broke, got your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. 
you ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you bout to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.